Well, it is exciting for me to be here. It's my first time in a, a mobile convention here in Warsaw. It's really interesting for me to kind of learn about the local industry and the local uh, uh, vibe. I was quite surprised from this convention, the size of it, the professional uh, uh, presentations. So it's really cool to be here and uh, kind of learn and get to know you guys. Um, so I'm Gal, I'm from UTEST. Um, how many actually know UTEST here? Right, how many, how many of you know that we have local offices here in Warsaw? Yeah, not enough, so it's a good thing I came, right? Cool. So uh, basically, um, what we do in UTEST, um, and it's not a presentation about UTEST at all, uh, just kind of a um, basic uh, um, getting to know us. Uh, we're the largest uh, crowdsource testing company in the world. Uh, basically, what we do is in the wild testing, where we believe that uh, testing, and especially mobile testings, really need the human factor around it. So it's not enough to do automation, it's not enough to do simulations, you really need uh, real users uh, to get, kind of get a feel of your application and make sure that it's right and it has the right quality. And, um, and um, so what we do, we have a, a community of testers, over 120,000 testers and growing. Um, we um, uh, contract them all over the world. Everyone can join the service. Many people work on the weekends uh, and on the evenings to test uh, uh, with us. We test for thousands of customers, all the big names uh, in the industry. That's with Google, with uh, Microsoft, with Amazon, with everything. Uh, everyone that is really out there, we test with uh, non-technological companies like uh, Walmart, Staples, and so on. And we'll touch briefly about that and why they come to us and why is it important for them. Um, so uh, how many of you are actually mobile developers? Kind of to get to know you, huh? cool. iOS? Android? Cool. I'm an Android as well, so it's good to see that uh, we out uh, force them. Um, so for, for the ones who are kind of sleeping now, and I, I can see you from here. <laughs> uh, a short exercise in uh, uh, awareness. Um, and since uh, uh, psychology, psychology uh, is kind of uh, my hobby, um, it's uh, an exercise in uh, waking up, but also in uh, body language. So first of all, if you're asleep and you kind of need uh, some energy, I just let you stand up and you stretch out a bit to get a feel of it. But if you're interested in the psychological part, then um, Human body language is really clear, and if you learn how to read it, it's uh, really interesting, uh, and you learn a lot. So basically, if, if someone stands, usually when he's protective or kind of self-aware, he will be closed. So you can see people standing like that, making themselves small or really closed, maybe hands in the pocket, they don't know what to do. And if they feel confident or want to express confidence, they'll be really big, so they'll open up. They'll sit very wide with uh, open legs. So you can really read that uh, uh, kind of language. Um, so try it out. Try to stand. And the most difficult exercise uh, is to actually be uh, uh, in a default pose. So try to stand like this for half an hour, or half, half a minute, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Half an hour is if, it, if you're in the army, maybe. So try to stand like this for half a minute especially against someone, and not do anything with your hands. And the body is struggling. You, you can feel it. Try it now, if you'd like to wake up, or try it at home, but your body will struggle. We'll also try to, huh? We have a volunteer. Yeah. That's two. Three is a crowd, guys. Yeah. Try to really be uh, uh, flexed and relaxed. And don't do anything with your hands. You can even talk, but so it's an interesting pose, and it's not very natural. Um, OK, you can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> but you get points for uh, exercising. OK, cool. S so um, up quality. So um, uh, the first feedback I got on the name is, w is that it was really vague. So what's up quality? 
So it's kind of intentional, right? Uh, it's a subjective headline. So if you choose something that is uh, vague enough, a lot of people can find something interesting in it and come to see the presentation. So it kind of works. Um, it also uh, allowed me to give uh, the name of the presentation, and then I had time to actually fill in the details. Uh, so it's the first time I'm doing this presentation, so you'll be kind of my guinea pigs, but uh, I guess uh, uh, thank you for helping. Um, and why I decided to talk about up quality and why I actually started uh, being passionate about it. And I know I am passionate about up quality. It's like the lowest level of nerdiness you can get. Uh, so I apologize about that. Uh, but hopefully after this presentation, you'll be a bit more passionate about it as well. And I also saw a lot of um, talks around uh, quality and testing in this convention as well, and also around the world. So it's really uh, an ongoing topic, um, and I'm glad about it, because it's really important. Um, so a bit about myself. Uh, I've been uh, uh, 14 years in the IT industry. Uh, did a bunch of stuff uh, from uh, Unix desktop applications to Windows to web applications. And on my uh, last position, uh, doing mobile applications. So I'm a big believer in reinventing and uh, rejuvenating yourself. So if you uh, spend a few years at something and you become really good at it, I suggest you move on and make a change. Um, and it really rejuvenates you and helps you kind of uh, mature and learn. So uh, it, it's a, it was a good experience to me. And, and I started um, uh, working in an Android mobile startup. Uh, I knew nothing about mobile before. I came with all the experience of web and server, and I thought, what the heck? I mean, it's not centralized. It's uh, not a server work. It's kind of easy. It's mobile client. Uh, quality should be really easy. There's no performance, no multi-threading. What could go wrong, right? It should be simple. So uh, from the highest of my pride, I crashed really well. Uh, and I failed fabulously with the first few, few builds. And then I, I was really excited, because then I understood there's a good opportunity to learn something new, something I didn't know before. And I kind of want to share with you guys uh, my experiences and the stuff I learned. So what are we going to kind of uh, walk through this on this presentation? Um, so a couple of questions I want to answer. Of course, app quality is something we all want to do. And again, I apologize for the presentation. I'm an engineer. So that's the fanciest I can do. Um, so we'll have to live with that. Um, but uh, hopefully, the content can make up for it. Um, so we all, we all want app quality, but what is it exactly? And the fact that we don't really know in the presentation was, or the, the name is kind of vague is, is interesting as well. Why is it important, or even more important than it was uh, in, in the past uh, few years? Who should actually say if my uh, app has quality or not? That's an interesting question to ask as well, because I'm a, a developer, and my app is always full quality, right? There is no uh, doubt about it. Um, how to, do I measure it? And why should I actually measure it? So if you don't measure, you don't improve. Uh, otherwise, it's just talk. And I'm sure you've been in the product to developer conversation where everyone has bright ideas and everyone's saying that the product is doing that or this. But no one really knows because there's no data behind it. So a measurement is really important. Uh, when and where should I measure it? Right? Do I measure it in development time, in testing time? And what, act, what tools can help me do that? and achieve quality. So of course, I went to Wikipedia to figure out what is app quality. Um, so it's uh, also a big definition. And usually when it's a big definition, they don't really know exactly, and they're trying to kind of cover all bases. So the first thing is uh, complies with functional requirements. I guess that's cool, but pretty vague. Uh, it, the way it compares to competitors, that's weird. If every app out there is crappy and mine is as crappy, do I have good quality? But that's, that's also interesting, because everything in the world is kind of relative. So it might be uh, an interesting factor. It should meet non-functional requirements, which is kind of, OK, I cover the functional, and I just need to cover the non-functional, and I'm covered uh, all, all the way. It should be robust, uh, uh, maintainable, and pr uh, produced correctly. So that's a bunch of words that actually tell us almost nothing, but we kind of get it, right? We should really do what, we, uh, what the idea of the application should do. 
We should make sure that other people can uh, cha do changes and evolve it and it won't break. And uh, everything should be good, right? So why it's even more important and a lot harder than it was before. So things have changed since the uh, early and happy days of uh, desktop applications and web applications. It changed in a lot of ways. It changed not just um, in the matter of uh, technology and uh, uh, new problems that arose. It changed also in the set of expectations. And expectations is a very uh, difficult thing to achieve because uh, they're really high today. And by that I mean first, uh, if you're a brand and you're a company, you have to have a mobile application. It goes without saying. And no matter what you do, you can be a mechanic, you can be a books company, you can be Coca-Cola, you have to have an app. And the bigger the brand and the better the brand and more uh, professional it is, the more professional the app should be. And so the expectation is that you have to have an app. It should be a cool app. It should be either complementing your experience or uh, replacing your experience. And it should rock, right? Because if, if you're a, a, good, a big company like, I don't know, Apple, and you uh, put uh, maps out there, and it sucks, then the Apple brand is a lot more damaged than anything else they would do. So, so Apple put a lot of great products out there, but th the time that people start thinking the magic is kind of breaking is because of the maps. And that's definitely a quality. They're doing amazing stuff, but quality is really important, and you can be really good and um, do a flop in one place, and it will really damage your uh, brand. And the thing is that it doesn't matter if you paid a, a, a big bunch of, of dollars on it or not. It should still be in quality. And, and the fear it gets, and especially in the Android world, where we all know that money is kind of problematic, and, and business plans are kind of shaky there, but you give them for free, you try really hard, you work years er, and years about it, and they're still not happy. The users are very demanding and have very high expectations. And of course, fragmentation matrix is a bitch. It is very complicated, it's getting more and more complicated, um, especially in the Internet of Things and the new world we're going to. So just in Android, uh, you have like a thousand devices times the screen sizes and the resolutions times the different rooms that uh, uh, providers are putting out there times the uh, different internet condition times languages and localization stuff. So it's a hell of a matrix to test and you develop like one application and it needs to rock on everything. Because as we, as we mentioned, it cannot fail in different aspects. The price, right, the price of failure is really high. And also, the app economy is getting bigger and bigger. Um, there's a lot of applications out there. A lot of users are using applications and consuming them. Uh, the competition is a lot bigger. So how many games applications are out there? How many calendar applications are out there? If you really want to compete with them, you have it's not like the early days where uh, 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 the keynote presentation uh, he, he talked about the golden age and the silver age, which I really liked. So we're, we're at the silver age and it's getting um, mass product and it's really hard uh, to kind of stand out in this huge economy. Um, so the cost of, of low quality is really high, right? Uh, if your application sucks, then users won't be happy. If they won't be happy, they'll tell everyone uh, uh, about it. So it's a whole different... Um, social and, uh, and sharing experience. In the good old days, you could have a, a brand like Coca-Cola, where they basically take a cough medicine, they put a lot of sugar and caffeine to make us all uh, addictive to it, and they say that's the taste of life, right? And we believed it. We saw a bunch of cool guys drinking it, uh, celebrities and singers, and I see you guys are drinking it uh, still. And we all know it's bad for us, right? It's bad for the teeth, it's bad for our health. Sugar is like the number one disease uh, 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 creator in, in the US and in the world. But we still drink it because that's a taste of life, right? But, but applications, you can't do that, right? You, you can't say, you know, my application is the taste of life, but it sucks, and everyone is giving you bad scores, and the market itself is built around scoring and reviews, 
And uh, when you search an application, it brings back the, uh, the a list of applications, and you get a lousy uh, uh, location in the search results if you have uh, low quality and, low and uh, bad reviews. And you also get uh, selected by those uh, scoring. So for instance, if I'm looking for a, a mail application, I would usually choose the one with the highest rating. So that's the only differenti differentiating I have there, unless my brand is really well known. So it's really important. Also users, when they actually choose an application and try it and, and uh, find a bug or find something that they don't like, they just download it and, and install something else. It's that easy. Right, there's a lot of competition out there. The technology is very uh, easy to be switched. So the cost of switch is like that. So you need to be at the right place with the right quality to win them over and not lose them. That's really important as well. The last thing is, as I said, the competition is very high. And you need to differentiate yourself. So if you can differentiate yourself by marketing, by a good sales organization, by a really unique idea that can't be copied, and we all know it's, that, it's really hard then quality is one of the great uh, uh, differentiator you can have. And users can feel that, and, and it's really important. So who should determine the quality? I think, and I think it's kind of backed up with facts, it's users. So the product guy can say what's our quality. The developer can say what's our quality. Our CEO can say what's, what's our quality. But who actually uh, uh, decides and votes uh, by downloading and bring it, bring in the revenue is the users. Uh, and it's very important, especially um, in the new world we've talked about. So the balance of, of power has changed. Uh, it used to be companies. Now it's users. Um, the branches used to tell us what to do, right? Uh, what and what to think. Right? The uh, Coca-Cola example, uh, the Apple example. Um, you know, that's the new iPhone, that's the best phone uh, you'll ever have. Now uh, people are reacting to it, uh, using the social network to uh, uh, talk about it. And it's really more like this, right? Uh, the users are defining uh, uh, the saying, defining the discussion of today and tomorrow. Um, and they usually like to talk about it when it's bad, right? So the Apple Maps uh, example. Uh, you can probably think of a lot of examples, right? Obamacare, total disaster on quality. Um, and it could be a really cool app and a really great product, but the users have the last say and the most important say. So, it so again, it doesn't matter how hard you worked on it. It doesn't matter how much your idea is cool. It's all about the quality the users are experiencing. So how should I measure quality? So first of all, Brand and social, right? You need to be uh, aware of the uh, brand and social aspects of your application. You need to measure them. It's not like the good old days where I develop something and I give it to someone to upload to production, my DevOps guy, or I upload it to production, and then I move on to the next uh, uh, build or the next uh, feature, and I don't care about it. It's a whole experience. It's a joint experience where you have to listen to your users. You have to listen to the reviews. You have to me measure them and keep, keep your eye on it. Otherwise, you, you get lost. And uh, by the time you understand there's a problem, the application has already suffered on, on quality and de therefore suffered on the other measurement. Business usage is kind of the second wave of things. So the, the, your ability to retain your users and to avoid the change, the switching of the application, and as we said, it's very easy. So you need to uh, review that as well. The cohorts and the funnels. So are you using users getting to the right place you want them uh, to get to, or are they having like quality problems to get there? Are they staying with you long enough? Uh, are they? Uh, is it a social experience? Do you get uh, uh, people to invite other people according to the with that quality and according to the uh, flows you uh, planned? Internal is also important, of course. Uh, bugs, crashes, error logs. You have to try to find that problem um, as soon as you can. And that's definitely a good tool to do it. Um, I guess uh, the interesting things about quality is that it's both relative and absolute. And we saw it a bit uh, with the definition we had. Right? So the definition was uh, relative. Check your competitors. And it's also uh, absolute. It has to qualify with the requirements. So that means, basically, 
let's say I put uh, the measurement as a star rating, and I want to get to a five star rating. Right? So it, does it even make sense for me? How much are my competitors getting? Maybe I'm uh, a Netflix application where I actually uh, um, present uh, videos half a year later than the actual, uh, uh, when they actually come out. And I'm doing that because my business model says that I'm sending DVDs for the first half year of that movie and I want people to buy DVDs and only afterwards consume it with my app. And the main complaint my users have, and this it's the same for every other uh, uh, media service, is that we don't get new services or new movies. We get only half years old uh, with some movies. So my model basically defines that I'm starting from a specific uh, quality rate, which is not five. Maybe I started four, or maybe I started 3.5. So that's a very interesting and, and important thing to do, is to set your goals correctly and make sure that relatively you're just good enough to differentiate yourself, but you're not setting your goal too high. So you'll just fail and it will be uh, you know, kind of frustrating and if inefficient. Uh, when and, and where uh, to measure. So the cliche says everywhere and always. Uh, for me, it's always as soon as you can. Um, so try to find it as soon as you can, as closer or as closest to the point of change. So if it's code, there's a bunch of uh, methodologies around finding uh, quality problems around code, whether it's static analysis or unit testing and integration testing, continuous integration, and so on and so forth, lean startup methodology, uh, whatnot, to find uh, problems as soon as you can. So you will fail, so fail fast. That's the, uh, that's the model. And, and once you fail, and it could be failure in code, or failure in testing, or even failure in production, which uh, of course we don't want to happen, but happens sometimes. So you need to fast, to, to track it fast, and to fix it even faster. So um, when I'm uploading a, a build to production and it gets approved after, I don't know, a couple of hours or in the iOS case, two weeks, um, I get uh, immediately start getting new feedback. And you need to be alerted on that feedback. Listen to your users. If there's a problem or, uh, or uh, alerts or new exceptions that appear in your logs, uh, instantly after the change, Tackle that. You might need to have a hotfix. You might to upload something really quick. Don't wait to it for it to crash your brand and crash your uh, uh, reputation because lost users is very hard to get back, and lost reputation is also very hard to get. Uh, so if that's that's the crappy app that crashed on me and I moved on, now I'm telling to it to all my friends. People like to talk about the failures again, not on the uh, success. Uh, so watch for new version uploads uh, that you do, watch for changes, watch for competitor changes. If they're uploading a new thing and now you're missing a, a very important features that others uh, have and you don't. So watch on do those uh, uh, areas of change and do a close monitoring on that. Don't over monitoring on every stage. Tools, uh, my favorite part. Uh, so you need to watch for everything and you need to monitor for everything. The different parts or the different entities I uh, recommend to uh, monitor is reviews. Uh, and for reviews, we have uh, a kick-ass uh, tool called uh, Applause, which is uh, by accident uh, developed by Utest. Uh, but basically what we do is we crawl the uh, App Store and, and uh, uh, Play Store uh, for the reviews and applications. And please don't tell them about it. And we cluster them and we compute them. So you can get scoring on your reviews. Uh, you can get uh, scoring on your reviews. You can get scoring on the uh, competitors' reviews. And we segment it to different attributes. So you can know what your users are thinking about s security in your application, about your performance, about elegance, about usability, and a lot of different aspects around your application. And it, it's always uh, been uh, measured relatively. So how am I doing uh, as opposed to my previous build? That's interesting. Have I damaged something? Have I improved something? It allows me to kind of get the, f the voice of the people and figure out um, what, what did I do? How is that change affect the public opinion of things? Um, I can compare myself uh, versus my competitors, right? 
So how am I doing in elegance versus uh, the other uh, application that I'm competing with? And the last but the most important thing, uh, I think, is how am I uh, doing according to the industry? So the industry has standards. For instance, if I'm developing a gaming app and my security score sucks, but security is not really relevant to users in my industry because gamers don't care about security, they care about elegance, they care about performance. So it's not really important. So it helps me focus on the right attributes I want to focus on. Um, another interesting uh, thing it does, uh, especially in version 2, uh, that is deployed in the coming weeks, is um, um, the ability to cluster reviews. So we can take a bunch of reviews that are similarly the same, uh, the same characters, and we do semantic analysis to figure that out. And we can give you uh, a, a representation of this whole chunk of reviews with a representative uh, review. And you can learn about, uh, uh, instead of going on thousands or hundreds, or it depends on the size of your application of reviews, uh, and figure out what's going on, you get a, uh, a bunch of clusters, and you get the trends. So my users are uh, giving me basically 10 different uh, 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 messages uh, from them. And this is the trend. This is one is going up because uh, I created a problem, and the other one is going down because I fixed the problem in the latest build. So it's a really good way to kind of efficiently monitor and understand what your users are saying. Um, for analytics, uh, there's a bunch of uh, analytics tools out there. Uh, Apsi is a cool uh, Israeli company, um, and I always like to promote small startups. Uh, so they do uh, analytics for mobile. And what they, uh, uh, their advantage is that they record some of the sessions. So you can do analytics for mobile and figure out your funnels, figure out uh, what your application is actually doing. And you can get a sample um, uh, video of that behavior of that funnel. So if I'm, I'm seeing a user that didn't went all the way through to the uh, uh, register and paid for the, uh, the item he wants to buy, then I can figure out what happened. Maybe it couldn't find the button. Maybe the button didn't work. So I can actually see a video of it. It's pretty cool. Of course, there's Flurry and uh, Google Analytics. We tried uh, Flurry and Google Analytics uh, back in the day. Uh, Apsi wasn't there yet. Uh, and Google Analytics has an interesting thing where they start to sample after, I think, a couple of million events a day. And once you, as they start to sample, you lose your ability to kind of compare with past events. And also, it gets really non-accurate. So wh what did we did at the end is develop our own uh, analytics uh, uh, capability, where we just application logs events into the system, and we use our own tools to do it. So it's not recommended. If you can find a good analytics tool, of course, it's better. But uh, make sure you understand the limitations of it before you start. So for crashes, we have uh, an even uh, better uh, tool it kicks more ass than the uh, uh, applause. And it's developed right here in Warsaw, so I'm particularly proud of it. It's called AppHens. Um, it's a crash analytics tool for mobile. It's a cool SDK where you just instrument it. And you get, first of all, crash analytics and pre-production and post. So it's really cool. You get uh, testing tools inside. So I'm testing my uh, mobile application, whether it's uh, via you test with the crowdsource or your, your internal team, or just you guys testing it yourself. And you see a bug. And now instead of going to your laptop and document it in Jira or something like that, you just check the device. You see a UI. You can snapshot the actual bug. You can draw on it. You can uh, input bug details inside. It gets the, uh, the data from the uh, uh, device itself. It's a really cool and convenient uh, automated tool. Um, and, the, and the good thing is that you get out of those tools um, crash analytics, and you can really see monitoring and get real-time uh, 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 reporting of your application. And then you can find those errors and find those bugs and find those problems in quality as soon as you can. Uh, there's a bunch of such tools, but of course, AppHens kicks them all. Um, Internal side, uh, so the server side is always the last uh, area for uh, um, monitoring, but it's also very important. It's usually a centralized uh, place for problems, uh, and it can affect heavily on your application behavior. 
Uh, Takip is another cool uh, uh, Israeli startup. Um, if you have a Java-based stack, which I don't know how many of you actually has, uh, so it does a cool thing. It uh, uh, connects to the JVM itself, and it finds exceptions not by uh, uh, looking at your logs, but actually finding the real exceptions, even the one that you don't report on, and the one that are caught and the one that are not caught. So it really helps you find the analytics. Sentry is doing something similar for Python, uh, which is also cool. New Relic and Nagios. All of these tools, I guess, are uh, working for uh, uh, finding uh, problems, finding exceptions, also finding um, uh, performance problems. And performance problems have a tendency to start growing and then explode. So you can find those changes in trends, right? Try to find them as soon as you can. Um, so I guess uh, that's it for me. Uh, the thing I want you to come up uh, from this session is first that your uh, quality is across the board. You need to f uh, monitor it and improve it across the board uh, from pre-production to post-production. Listen to your users. They're the one who makes the decision. They're the one that brings bring in the numbers and the revenue. They are speaking loudly out there. The systems are built in to get their reviews and get their uh, input and translate it into actual business uh, inputs. So it's very important. Don't over focus on the development side, but make sure you cover the entire uh, uh, world of testing and monitoring. Um, and make your users happy, and they will make you happy uh, in return. Uh, so uh, time for uh, I have some time for questions. Uh, uh, you can t ask me now. You can email to me. Uh, check out our products; they're pretty cool. Um, and also, if you're passionate about uh, uh, quality, which I am, basically it took me some times, but I figured out that uh, I'm as a developer and a, a dev manager uh, spent a lot of years dealing with quality, and I didn't know about it. So working on new features and coding, that's the easy part, right? Making sure that it actually works, making sure that you fail early, making sure that you get it uh, with the right quality to production. The whole mumbo jumbo, scrum bun, uh, lean startup stuff around failing earlier and finding those bugs. Everything is that, uh, uh, everything there is about app quality. And that's basically the majority of things we do, like TDD and stuff like that. And so uh, what we are, it is, as you just tr are trying to do is really ease up uh, that process for developers, help people make better applications and, and better uh, uh, software, and kind of take that problem from them and, and wrap it uh, with uh, the exact tools and methodologies that they need and the services that they need to improve that quality. And if you're passionate about and want to change the world around quality and create the kind of services that you as developers would want to consume, so we are hiring, and uh, you can uh, mail me or uh, talk to me as well. Um, it's an exciting uh, uh, place to be, to really try to disrupt the QA world and the way people are developing applications, um, to make it quality as a service, so you guys can uh, handle uh, our business logic, and we can take care of the rest. We do keep in the center the human factor of things, so real people will look at your applications, will tell you what's wrong, not what just failed functionally, but what feels funny, what is not clear, uh, will test the common devices, will test with real life conditions, and they can really help you uh, bring in the right quality for your applications and for your users. Any questions? That men, they warned you, they warned me that you uh, ask a lot of questions, especially at this time of day. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>